and welcome back to Laravel Podcast. This is season five, where every single episode is about a different package. And today we're going to be talking about Pest, which is a testing framework created by my friend Nuro. Uh, Nuro? Nuno? Um, Nuno, could you say hi to the people? You corrected me on your name earlier, and now it just got me all thrown off. Nuno, could you say hi to all the people and say your name correctly? And then uh, just start off by telling us a little bit about what is Pest about. <laughs> hi, everyone. Uh, so my name is Nuno Maduro. And yeah, Thank you so much for having me, Matt. Uh, PAST is a PHP testing framework with focus on simplicity, and it was crafted kind of to bring the joy of testing to PHP, it gives you a tons of cool features like good reporting on a console, parallel testing, and more. I love it. So I know that it's going to be difficult to show a little bit of like what's so cool about PAST because it's a very visual thing, but we're going to do our very best for all of y'all to kind of explain a little bit about what the pitch is about what it, the experience is of working with it, even though we can't perfectly show you the things. So before we even get into the next steps, which is how do you install it? What are the setup steps, dependencies? I really want people to understand why PEST. And so let's say that our audience is either somewhat or very familiar with PHP units. So if you all aren't just real quick, you, you'd make a class and each method in the class would be the name of a, a test and it would be all in underscores. It would be something like test underscore it underscore gets underscore data underscore correctly. And then inside of there, the, 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 the body of that method is where you're doing your tests. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about what's different just from the front? Obviously, there's other functions, there's other features, but like just from day one of working with PEST, what makes it different in working rel relative to working with PHP unit? So great question. So the main job PEST tries to solve is really giving people a simple way to test their applications. So we kind of followed a lot of our philosophy here of trying to make things very simple. Uh, all the features are very simple. Documentation is very simple as well. And we want people to feel that testing is not actually hard. It's not something that actually takes time. And actually, I prepared a very simple example for you all. Love it. Uh, with past, you can actually test if a page is okay with one single line. Mm -hmm. You just get the main endpoint and you assert OK. And you can have this line on your PHP file with just a PHP open script on top and then this mm -hmm. line just below. And you can have a simple test with one line that tests a lot. And for me, this is really important, just really giving people a lot of power in the very, very, very simple way. Another two examples I have here is the possibility of running all your tests in parallel, which just make things way faster. And all of this happened, but just by passing an option, which is the flag parallel. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we have so much cool things on past today, like uh, the most beautiful error reporting I have ever seen on a testing framework in the world <laughs> is actually building on past. And I'm not Love even it. joking. I've worked with tons of past uh, testing frameworks and past is really the most beautiful testing reporting I have ever found. Mm. And yeah, so, me, so many built-in features that don't exist in other testing frameworks in PHP, like PHP unit, like parallel testing doesn't have, doesn't, doesn't exist on PHP unit. Um, all of these cool things that normally takes time to set up, they are just easy to do with PEST. I love that. And so one of the things that people see when they first look at PEST is they notice that the syntax is different. Um, and we can talk about that in a second, but I think what I really appreciate that you just named is it's not just that the syntax different is different, is that a lot of things that are either hard work in PHP unit or manual configuration on each new project just come out of the box. Like you can do parallel testing in PHP unit, but it takes work and it takes knowing how to set it up and then it takes setting up over and over and over again in every new project. Whereas with PEST, it just comes out of the box. With PHP unit, it's basically impossible, I think, to get the sort of like single or simple syntax that you're doing in PEST. It's possible to get nice, pretty printers in PHP unit, but first of all, none of them are as nice as PEST. And second of all, it takes a whole bunch of work, right? So it's a combination of like the quality of things you're getting for PEST, but also the ease with which you get them out of the box, right? Correct. It's exactly yeah. that, Matt. Okay. So again, one more thing before we get into the actual normal questions of the thing. Can you talk a little bit about the syntax of an average test and how it differs from the syntax of an average PHP unit test? Absolutely. So PHP unit offers you this kind of class-oriented API. Uh, in that API, it's basically the things people already are used to, which is a namespace, a class that extends something, and then you see a public function to actually see your first test. So you need to write mm -hmm. all of this boilerplate to even do a simple assertion that your page is okay. So what we have done with past is kind of getting back into our routes 
to the routes of PHP and mm -hmm. see, all right, how, what is the simplest way I can see just a simple assert okay? Well, just let's just remove all of the boilerplate mm -hmm. and just simply write what we want to test. And yeah, this philosophy was, it's very inspired by Jest, which is uh, the, yeah. one of the most popular JavaScript frameworks in the world. And I, I thought an opportunity here to also bring some of that simplicity to PHP, and I think uh, I have made it well. Yeah, definitely. And um, one of the things I love is, so I often talk to people who are trying to come into PHP from the outside, and one of the things they complain about the most is they say, I show up to a new Laravel thing, and there's dozens of files, and each of these files have all these namespaces and stuff, and there's reasons for it, and they just have to learn it. But I love the idea of something where if there's a potential for us to make it possible for people to write these things without having to, you know, like learn about all the namespaces and the classes, or even just getting rid of the visual clutter, as you know, some folks say, of all of those things, it just can make your tests a lot simpler. Um, I wanted to say one more thing about the syntax, and I'm just going to go directly at it. So um, in PHP unit, if you're making something, and I'm just going to go to the pest homepage and look at whatever example you have there. So you've got... Um, uh, okay, there you go. You're, you've got something that says it's a test that asserts that a user exists in a database. So um, mm -hmm. you're going to check that a database has in the user's table an ID, an entry with an ID of one. So doing this in PHP unit, and again, sorry for y'all just listening, but I'm going to do my best to try and describe it. You're going to say public function test underscore it underscore has underscore users and then parentheses and then squiggly brace. And then inside that method, you're going to then say this arrow assert database has and then whatever users ID of one. So it's a very simple test in PHP unit. It's not a ton of work to write, but to have that one test in PHP unit, you have all all the other things, which is what Nuno was talking about. So in this particular test here, and also you might have to do migrations and seeding. Uh, in this particular test here, it's literally a function named it. So it, and then parentheses, and then you're writing these test names in actual sentence case. So has space users, and then end of their parentheses. So you have this a little bit more expressive way of writing these things where you're not having to constantly like figure out how to write underscores. And then immediately chained off of that, you're just doing your assertions. So again, you don't have to then open up the, the method and then inside of the method use this all that you're just literally chaining the actual you know steps of your test off of either off of that or as a closure that you're passing into that either way um so it may seem like not a lot but i would recommend all of y'all if you're interested in this just go to pestphp.com and just look at what the tests look like because there's all these other things we're going to talk about today but i think that if you're not seeing just the base understanding of how simple a test is and how much cleaner it is to read in jest or pest you haven't even quite understood one of the foundational pitches of it so all right um so now that we've kind of like talked about that high level stuff let's go into what does it look like to actually install pest into an existing laravel app and are there any key steps or dependencies or what is what's like the installation story look like well the installation is super simple it's a composer required away from you so basically once you're required you can immediately start using pest and this is where this was a very important key for me is that i wanted to make pest progressive uh, meaning that you can install PAST on an existing project with mm -hmm. or without PHP unit tests, and then you don't have to change a thing. You can immediately run PAST, and your test, will, test suite will just, will just run. Then if you want to opt in with a new API of actually writing the thing you just described with, with the eat functions and things like that, you can use it. But if you don't want to, you can simply use PAST for the beautiful error reporting. You can simply use PAST for the beautiful output for parallel testing coverage and all the plugins it has. But if you want to opt in uh, using this function-based API, you can also do it. But it was really important for me that you just install PAST with the composer require and you don't have to change a thing. So there is not really complicated things here, just the composer require. So even if I'm making a brand new app, and I like writing the PHP syntax just because I prefer it, I will mm -hmm. still get value from PEST because I will get, you said, parallel testing support. We're getting the beautiful output. Is there anything else you're getting on top of a PHP unit app? If I continue doing the traditional PHP unit syntax, is there anything else I'm getting from installing PEST? Yeah, so besides all these options that you can pass uh, next to the password, which is 
coverage, parallel testing, the watch plugin, the retry plugin. So there is like a full list of plugins that you can find on the website. We mm -hmm. also offer you something we call the expectation API, which is an alternative to the assertion API um, mm -hmm. uh, with, from PHP unit. And to make it really simple, so when you are working with PHP unit, you basically type the word this, and then you can call the assert, and then a bunch of methods to actually assert that your code is working as expected. Now, mm -hmm. you can still use this on pass if you want to, but we offer you an alternative, which is the expectation API. Now, the expectation API solves tons of problems that I think, tons, tons of things that can be better that I think I have found on PHP unit. Multiple things such as you can chain expectations on the same value. So, for example, you can do things uh, such as I expect the Laravel podcast to contain podcasts, but also to be a string and to be, so you can do multiple uh, uh, expectations on the same value. Uh, the methods are just shorter and a little bit more simpler in my opinion. Um, and I mean, there is multiple things into this expectation API that I invite you all to check it out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, there is small add-ons that you can opt in that you can basically use if you want to, but you, if you want to use past simply to enjoy the beautiful error reporting, you can do it that way if you want to. Love it. So. What we're saying here is even if the new syntax is something that you're not familiar with, even if you have a massive code base um, full of tests, or even if you don't want to learn the new syntax anyway, layering pest on top of your existing PHP unit um, tests gives you, like you said, parallel testing, uh, easy co coverage generation, uh, the beautiful reporting, and a suite of plugins that you can choose to opt into if one day you want them. So the expect is a really beautiful one that I really like, which once again takes us from this arrow, assert equals thing, comma, thing. And let's say you're testing that same thing three times in a row. Now you have three of those exact same line versus this one, which says expect and then you just, it's a method, it's a function name expect, you pass in the value, and then you're just chaining all on your expectations on it. So again, it's just this like nice, fluent, convenient syntax that Nuno's talking about. I really love that a lot. So one of the cool things about this is we don't lose anything by installing PEST. You don't have to convert all your tests to this newer newer API. You gain something immediately, you get better test reporting and everything like that. Um, you also gain the potential of coverage and um, parallel testing, which when you have it, if it's, you know, when you need it, if it's super easy to do at that point, it's gonna feel great. And you get the potential to add all these other plugins. Um, I think there's also plugins, if I, I have not used these, but I think there's plugins that make it easier to do testing with Livewire and I feel like at least one other thing. Oh, you talked about the watch plugin as well. I haven't used either of those. So there's other things like the watch plugin and the retry plugin have to do with with how you actually run your tests and it's like watching for changes and rerunning the files, rerunning the tests then, right? Correct. Can you tell us exactly a little bit about that? that? Yeah, the, the watch plugin is pretty, very useful. I was actually doing a presentation, a talk in Italy a few days ago, and I was constantly like changing the code, then rerunning my tests, changing the mm -hmm. code and go again to the console, rerunning my tests. And the way I was pitching this watch plugin was like, did you watch how many times I actually had to change my code and then yeah. rerun the test on the console. It was yeah. like 50 times. It wouldn't be cool if I could have like past watching my file and just rerun itself every time it changes. Well, we can use this in past by simply pass the option watch. And the, yeah. the watch is basically this process on past that every time you change a test, that you will rerun the tests itself. It's pretty useful if you are just constantly doing some kind of TDD approach, you know? So yeah. uh, very useful, yeah. All right, so our next question is, are there any less used features that are cool or cool things you've seen people do with it? Uh, yeah, so actually like, there is a feature which I think is really polished on past, which is data sets. And data okay. sets on past allows you to basically rerun the same test with multiple information. And this is mm -hmm. very useful and is a feature that I don't see people using that often, but I think it's very powerful. And to give you an example, like you can have this, past test, which you just call it test email validation. And you probably want to test this with different emails, like 100 different emails. Yeah. And data sets are very useful in this scenario because you can simply say test email validation, write the test, and then at the bottom, you just say with, and you provide an array of emails. Mm -hmm. And what past will do is basically rerun the same test multiple times with all those different emails. This is one of the features that I think it's really polished on past, but people don't use it quite often. Yeah, and it's, it's like, most on, most commonly go known as data providers on PHP Unit, actually. Yeah, I was just going to say it's like PHP Unit's data providers, but so much simpler yeah. to use. So I love it. 
Yeah. So because uh, in PHP you need you need to you need to basically add an annotation with mm -hmm. the with the name data provider, and then you need to pass the function name, and then you need to create the function that actually you need to type all these things like public function, then the not set the data provider name, open parentheses, and then return kind of a subset of arrays. Is I, I think it's very complicated. Yeah. So it is. The, with with data sets, you can simply just write the test, and you just chain the method with with an array of emails and that's it. Yeah. So very powerful. Then there is a little, little, little things that exist on data sets that uh, you can, for example, extract your data set into a different file and mm -hmm. reuse it, which can be also useful. Yeah. But yeah, a another two things that I actually have here about a feature that less use it is actually the coverage. I mean, okay. I understand that the coverage have this kind of bad reputation of being yep. something that doesn't really tell you like the quality of our test suite. But now that coverage with pass doesn't actually have to be complicated, something I think people should do is simply ensuring that at least new tests do not decrease the test coverage. Okay. Even though if the test coverage doesn't tell you like the quality of the test suite, it's kind of a nice metric to have to at least ensure that new, new pull requests contain some tests somehow. Right. It yeah. doesn't matter the quality, but at least tests are there a little bit. So kind of a feature that I don't see people using that much, even though the reporting on the console is kind of pretty, I think. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's some of the nicest reporting I've seen. And I like your idea because one of the reasons why coverage has often been a problem is not because it's not a tool that we can be using, but it's people use it the wrong way. Like people use coverage to say your code's not good unless it has 100% coverage. And once it has 100% coverage, it is good. And like you said, just because it has coverage doesn't mean it's actually a good test. And just because something doesn't have 100% coverage doesn't mean it's not good tests. But there's other things you can use coverage to look at. And one of the things you said is let's just not decrease coverage over time. You know, So if we're at 62%, let's make sure each pull request keeps us at or above 62%. And that totally makes sense, especially in open source projects where you've got people contributing new stuff. And sometimes it's, it's hard to remember to check for that kind of stuff and i can certainly imagine the value of just being able to say hey there's a rule in the pull request template that says mm -hmm. check to make sure the coverage doesn't go down you know kind of thing or something so that totally makes yeah. sense correct are there any other lesser used features that you want to share with us um i actually have here some cool stories if you want to hear about yeah, I'd love things to hear that. that yeah things i mean people have done with i think that. one of the most impactful features because I actually want to talk about the fact that some of the features I'm mentioning here, you probably have seen them now on Laravel. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is kind of a Laravel past thing because because I'm a Laravel core team member and I also work for past, there is some features that you probably have seen on past that are now available on Laravel mm -hmm. to use with PHP unit or past. Uh, one of them is kind of the parallel testing thing. Uh, which is, in my opinion, one of the most impactful contributions I have ever made on Laravel in past. Mm -hmm. I have seen like entire test suites going from 10 minutes to one minute. Mm -hmm. This is really life changer, in my opinion, uh, because you don't have to wait like 10 minutes for your deploy uh, to start. Yep. Uh, which is very cool. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like I think. Um, also, I, I, I get very happy when I see like uh, people saying I have two thousand hundred two thousand tests already in my test suite written in past, which is actually even more than I ever have wrote in past myself. Yeah. So I get also excited about that. So that's, that's awesome. uh, kind of cool stories, yeah, about past. Very cool. Um, yeah, I mean, if if anybody follows much of the Twitter community, uh, the Laravel community, and obviously the. Twitter Laravel people are only a small subset of the Laravel community, but it is fun to watch the adoption of Pest kind of starting to hit a really inflection point right now, where it's gone from like occasionally a few Pest advocates were using in the past to now more and more people. It really feels like it's the, the, the momentum is picking up exponentially. So, All right, so do you have a development roadmap for this package you'd like to share? Do you have any big plans coming forward, or does it feel pretty good as it is right now? Uh, well... Well, actually, you mentioned a good point. Uh, Pass V1 is actually feature frozen right now, uh, mm -hmm. meaning it's super stable, but we are actually working actively on Pass V2 already, kind of under the um, under the table because, I mean, PHP Unit 10 is under development as well, which is kind of the foundation for Pass. Mm -hmm. uh, PHP Unit 10 doesn't have a release date yet, mm -hmm. so that's why you are not being super 
um, we're not talking too much about past V2, but we already have a, list, a nice couple of additions on it. Uh, the retry plugin is kind of new only for past V2, allows you mm -hmm. to basically, uh, you run test suite, the test suite will fail, and you run the same past thing with the retry option. It will just pick up from the tests that have failed. Mm -hmm. um, we are actively working on a new view video series for a platform that we all know, but I cannot talk about it yet. <laughs> Got it. Uh, but we also have a blog post, a blog, official blog for past as well under development. Mm -hmm. Development. So yeah, that's the kind of thing that we are uh, into right now. But um, don't think that because re rewriting past for PHP Unit 10 is a lot of work. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it may sound like not too much, a simple migration. But when you are like kind of sitting on top of PHP Unit, uh, there is a, a lot of small things that you need to change. So. It's still a work in progress, but I think we'll make it. Very cool. Um, so speaking of the fact that you're doing work right now, and also speaking of the fact that you use, you said the word we, and actually let me stop there. I know that you're the primary creator of Past, and I don't, I'm, I'm not asking you to name everyone who's ever done a pull request. I'm sure you're grateful to everybody who's done anything. But do you have any other kind of primary core team members of Past, or are you really the main core right now and everyone else is helping out, helpfully, but uh, that, not as a core member? That's a great, a great question, and thank you so much for paying attention to that. Because at the beginning, indeed, like when I first released the project, it was basically me. But now mm -hmm. we have this kind of core team, or at least uh, a list of members that I trust a lot and basically mm -hmm. give a lot of ownership over past. Mm -hmm. uh, like we have Oliver, kind of uh, Oliver Nobroi, which is kind of the PHP Storm plugin maintainer. Mm -hmm. We have Owen Vogue, which takes care of all the uh, repository GitHub actions workflows, kind of this hidden work that nobody sees, but it's really helpful. Yeah. Look down in, which is wonderful, like kind of discovering cool features and really making content about past. Uh, a lot of people, even Freak Van Herten, uh, recently have made a lot of contributions to the plugins as well. So there's a lot of people who kind of are in my trustworthy group for past. Love it. And yeah, it's kind of a team already, to be honest. Nothing official, but it really helps to have people like next to me just taking ownership of the project and making stuff as well. That's very cool. And, and my next question actually dovetails perfectly in that, which is, would you like to request any help or support? If somebody is interested in contributing back to PEST, is there something they could do right now? Mm -hmm. uh, good question. So currently PEST is a project with uh, actually an organization with dozen, thousands of dozens of projects already. Mm -hmm. and there is this misconception, which is if you want to contribute to PEST, you need to be very good at PHP. So that's not, It's first of all, it's not true. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is that there is tons of things you can do if you don't know PHP and, mm -hmm. or you don't know very well PHP. The first yeah. one is creating content around PEST. This is something mm -hmm. that you were talking about the, the wipe about PEST. And trust me, like the wipe just happened because people started creating content around past yeah. uh, because the framework has been here since two years of now. Um, so yeah, one thing you can do is just simply create content around past. It helps a lot. Recently, companies have investing time creating past video courses, articles, and that really helps an adoption, uh, really takes past over the masses is really because of those content creators. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, like just contributing to documentation is a very simple way to get started with open source, but also getting started helping past. It's very difficult to find people who are interested to actually help on the documentation. So if you are yeah. up to it, it's also a very good um, thing to do. Love it. Um, so if anybody's interested in checking out past and learning more about it, where do they go? And if they're interested in following you, where do they do that? Yeah. So to to if you are interested on past, you can check out the website pastphp uh, dot com. Uh, if you are interested to hear stuff about me, just follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handler is. I think Matt will put on the. It'll be in the show the, notes. Yep. On the show notes, so yeah, yep. just follow me on Twitter, and all my stuff is over there, basically. That sounds great. Is there anything else you wanted to cover about past today before we wrap? No. Thank you okay. so much, Matt, for having you me know, here. Thank you. Not only thank you for t teaching us this stuff, but like. Pest is a delight to work with. So thank you so much for creating this and having a vision for what a, a testing experience that is so much easier and so much more beautiful would look like for all of us. I really appreciate you, man. Thank you. All right. And to the rest of you all, we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.